Hello and welcome to my next quick tip video. Um, this is number five now in my series of quick tip videos for the 2600. Um, if you didn't see the others yet uh, and want to have a look, you can find them in my channel or just click on the link in the description uh, below. In this video, I'd like to talk about the sample and hold section. Um, this one, <laughs> the ring modulator and also um, the special behavior of the AR envelope generator. And yeah, let's share some ideas and use cases with uh, the unit and these functions. Okay, so let's start. Um, so for the AR envelope generator, um, one thing is interesting. It will only output the voltage that it receives at its input. Um, I think for the original ARP2600 it was the same. Um, to show you what I mean, um, let's send a voltage. Uh, okay, so you remember from the last video um, that the output of the voltage processor is always inverted on these mixers. So. Um, when the label here says minus 10 volt, it will go through the inverter and you will get plus 10 volts. So let's patch it here, set the switch, and now see what happens. Ah, okay, now you can hear the signal. What is it, like 3 volts? Yeah, okay, it opens up at around 3 volts. There it closes and it gets louder. So right now the AR envelope generator is modulating the VCA. So when this receives a trigger or a voltage at this input, um, it will open up the VCA with the output voltage. And the output voltage now is 10 volts. Here it's around 5 volts see and then until it disappears closes and also if you use the release time you see it fades slowly fades out and also it has an attack time so if you just give an impulse and that's interesting because um, this is also like a lag processor like this one but this one has um, different settings for the attack and release phases of the black. Um, so you can use this also to shape um, modulation signals like LFOs or waveforms. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's an interesting use case for this. Um, but yeah, I will show you later uh, what I'm using it for. Um, right now, let's talk about um, the sample and hold. Um, yeah, just a short description. So, what is a sample and hold? Um, what does it mean? So, the, the signal which is present at the sample input um, is sampled at a rate which is um, set by the signal at the trigger input, which is here, the external clock in, and this is internally um, connected to the internal clock. And yeah, this value will, will be held at that voltage um, on the sample and hold output. So that's what it means. I mean, you put in a signal, you trigger, a sample, so it will take a sample, output the sample at the sample and hold out until it receives the next trigger. And internally, the rate at which it will sample um, will be connected to the internal clock. So, and you know how that sounds. Let's turn it up. Oh no. Here we are. Okay. So the sample and hold out is internally connected to the inputs of the FM controls of the oscillator 1 and 2 
and yeah, that's the typical thing. Sounds a bit like R2D2, you, you know all that sounds. And what happens now? Um, it takes a sample at this rate, um, which is coming from the noise generator. So that's the input value again. Listen how that sounds. So if I turn down the noise generator, there's no value at the sample input now. And if I turn down the noise color, you see? So now the frequency will change not so drastic. If I turn this up the whole range, then you get really high jumps, high staircase voltages. Okay. So, yeah, that's the voltage, uh, the sample and hold. Um, and you can trigger this from outside. So, um, let's say you put in um, the gate voltage from here and put it into the external clock in. What now happens, so you see if I turn the switch down, um, this will still be triggered by the internal clock, but the sample and hold will be triggered from the gate. This can't be synced from outside. So the internal clock will always be at its own rate, set by this fader. But you can yeah, you can you can put in a clock for the sample and hold unit or circuit. Um, yeah, so that's the sample and hold. Another um, thing you can do, you can put in like a waveform from an oscillator and use this uh, for the sample and hold. Okay. What we now get is like an arpeggiator or something like this. So if you um, have a quantizer, like... Uh, wait a minute. Yeah. Sometimes I'm using a quantizer like this one. Um, this is from IntelliJ, it's pretty nice, and um, you could use this, um, yeah, really to make, to make arpeggios with it, or to control the notes that you get from the sample and hold, and then use the output of the quantizer and send it back to an oscillator. Um, yeah, that's the sample and hold. Um, Okay, let's stop it for now. Um, so now let's get back to the ring modulator. Um, so for the ring modulator, to explain what it does, we need a bit um, of theory and background. So what is a ring modulator? Um, a ring modulator, it, it will output the product of the signals on its inputs, these both which means there's a multiplication going on. Um, it is similar to a VCA, but a VCA will only respond to positive voltages. Uh, the ring modulator responds to both positive and negative voltages. So that means if it's set to audio with this switch, then it's a ring modulator, then it's AC coupled. That means positive and negative voltages, and only positive voltages, then it's DC coupled. And then it's a VCA. Then it's amplitude modulation. Um, if it's set to ring mode, I mean, you can use it in both modes. So you can you can use it for making bell sounds or use it with a with a guitar or other sounds um, through the internal uh, external input. Um, with drums is also nice. Like one input will get a drum sound, the other input will get um, an oscillator. 
Um, or you can just produce new wave shapes with it. Um, and if it's set to DC, then the carrier frequency will also be part of the output. If it's set to audio, like in ring mode mode, then only the sidebands will pass through because this multiplication will, will produce a lot of sidebands and a lot of new harmonic on and inharmonic content. Um, so yeah, let's take a listen how this sounds. Um, let's see. Okay, so that's the output of the ring modulator. Um, now we listen to the sawtooth of oscillator 1 at the input and the sine wave of oscillator 2 at the other input. So, that sounds pretty harsh, but um, you can put in sine waves only. So let's take the sine wave of oscillator 2 um, and the sine wave of oscillator 3. Oh wait, I can just do it like this. Ah, okay. Now we're getting these bell-like sounds. So if we tune this... You see? Yeah, I mean... The ring modulator. I think you know how it sounds. Um, yeah, and um, that's the ring modulator. And to use it as a VCA, as I said, put in the DC and you're ready to go. So to show you the VCA functionality, I will put in the LFO output, put it into this. And now we need a signal to control the modulation of the VCA. Let's put in a slowly pulsing oscillator. So now each time the oscillator will go to positive voltage. Um, then this input um, will be passed to the output. So let's listen. Turn this up. Okay, so you see? So each time the pulse goes up, the modulation will be passed to the oscillator. And if I change the rate, so that's amplitude modulation or a VCA. And if I put it to audio now, so it will become a ring modulator, then the signals will be multiplied, which is different. So you see? So now you will get the positive and negative output of these both wa waves that will be multiplied, okay? Yeah. So, yeah, back to the envelope generator. Um, I wanted to show you an example. Um, so, let's start with patching. So, what I want to do, I have prepared um, a sequence from the Korg SQ1. So, we take the um, control voltage, the pitches, out of the CV1 of sequence A and the gate output of sequence A, put it here. And let's listen how that sounds. Okay, we don't hear anything because the oscillator has turned down. Okay, so that's the sequence. sequence. It's okay. It's pretty boring. Um, and now I want to, um, now I 
want to use um, ah, okay we have the gain up now I want to use um, the output of sequence B the control voltage which is sense um, to introduce some accents um, to the volume um, so let's do that so we need to mix these signals take the CV of sequence B put it here the gate of sequence 1 put it here now we can mix these signals um, we need to invert the output now again because now here we have positive voltages this will be negative so we need to invert it again to get a positive voltage okay send it here let's see how that sounds This is the gate of sequence A. And now that's interesting. What you hear now is we now reached the threshold of the ADSR envelope generator. This will only trigger above, I don't know, 4 volts, 5 volts, something around this. And if we go below these range, then it doesn't trigger but we still hear the AR envelope generator. And now if we add the CV, you see? Yeah, we get some accents from the ADSR. Or we can just send more volts, more voltage, and then it will trigger every time on each node. Uh, the problem we have now You see now we're getting also longer notes. These are tight. Um, I mean this is fine because it makes uh, the sequence lively or sounds cool, but that's not always what we want. And um, we can change this as well because what happens now is the CV um, of sequence B will only be changed on the next step. It means on step one you have, for instance, one volts, on step two you have two volts, but there is no break, no, no, um, no break in between these voltages. It's just straight voltage going out, going to the next voltage, going to the next voltage, but it's not zero volts in between. For the gate, we also have zero volts in between because there's a defined length. Um, and if we want that, then we need to make sure that only the changes of the CV come through when a gate is present. And for this we can use the ring mod again um, as a VCA. So um, I'm using the gate output again of sequence A, send it to a multiplier um, from there back to an input of the ring mod, which is now a VCA in DC mode. Um, send the CV to the other input of sequence B. And the output of the ring mod to the mixer. Um, and also, so now we have this dynamic voltage going on here. But we also send um, the gate voltage to the other input of the mixer. Let's see how that sounds. Okay, we need to set the switch accordingly. Let's hear. Something's wrong here. What's that? Ah, okay, we need to turn up the levels. Now it works. See? Now you don't have these hanging notes anymore. So you can set it 
and now so this is the gate voltage let's put this right below the threshold of the ADSR and now every now and then so now we have kind of Three or three like sequence going on. Let's turn on some turn up turn off some some steps. Yo, nice. Okay. Now it sounds like typical sequence with accents. Yeah. Okay, so that's how it works. Um, and these are just some ideas again um, of how you can use this unit and what you can do with it. So, I mean, even if it says ring mod on the label, it doesn't mean you can only use it as a ring mod. You can use it for, for VCA functions as well. You can use it as amplitude modulator. Um, so yeah, I mean, experiment, find out uh, what you can do with it. Um, ah, one thing uh, I'd like to show you is also with the sample and hold processor. Um, you can use this actually, like for reducing the sample rate. Um, I did this in, in one of the sounds videos I did. Uh, but let me explain how this works. So, again, keep the sequence running. Um, now take the output of the VCF, or you could also take the output of the VCA, go to the sample and hold input, um, and the external clock will be coming um, from an oscillator, from a pulse output. So now this is running an audio rate, um, and the output of the sample and hold goes back to the VCA. You see? Now it's audio rate very high, and the lower I go, the more artifacts you will produce, similar to um, what you can do in your in your DAW with reducing the sample rate with a plugin. So, the lower I go with the frequency, I can go to totally destruct total destruction. You see? But that's funny. So now the 2600 can speak. <laughs> I mean, you can also use um, VCF modulation by the VCO2 for similar effects, but you can't go make it really, yeah, to, to totally destruction. Okay. So now that's it. That's what I wanted to show you today, and um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I can just advise you to experiment on yourself, on your on your own, and um, yeah, looking forward to make the next videos, and uh, just leave a comment if you have questions, or if you have some ideas, or just for feedback, I mean, I'm happy for every comment, so thanks for watching, and see you next time.